I just, I just, how, how's everybody doing? God blessings everybody, this is the Gaming Christian 1 <laughs> with another video and today I'm doing another book video. You know what? It's, 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 it's getting boring. I just did a couple of books. They were all fine videos. I don't want to, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to complain, but my goodness, filming and editing, it doesn't seem like much and it kind of isn't, but I'm just lazy. Now I was planning, geez, let's do those Final Fantasy books as well. I don't feel like it. Now I have to film the book apart from... Okay, you know what? Let's let's just get this over with. I'm just gonna scroll right through them. I'm just going fast through. I'm just going. I'm just going to do this really quick because I don't feel like it. Really, it's a Saturday, and uh, you know what? I should maybe I could spend my day differently, you know, or I could be lazy the whole day. But no, let's just record a a let's check a book, a video game book. What is the title saying anyway? I don't even know. Oh well, let's just see. Let's just see what kind of uh, book am I going to record? It's Final Fantasy VII Strategy Guide. So that's what the title was saying. Oh, you rascals! You should have told me. You know, now I'm yes, Final Fantasy VII. Maybe if you've seen all of my videos completely, if you did, thank you. You don't have to, of course. You know that I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. It's the strategy. I love this game. This is one of my all-time favorite games, even till this day, with games like Mass Effect and uh, Bioshock. And I'm talking about Infinite. And I'm talking about the first Bioshock. I've been, I've uh, just been playing uh, The Last of Us, which was a very awesome game. But for me personally, not technically, but personally, Final Fantasy VII is definitely the most favorite game ever. And I haven't played this game since my childhood. So yeah, let's just. Ooh, let's just, let's just, let's just, yes, you know, I was kind of like, well, let's not do, okay, let's not waste any more time, let's go check out the official Final Fantasy VII strategy guide for the PlayStation 1. Okay, let's start off with the cover, um, as you can see, it's clouds, looking at the big Midgar building, I don't know what it's called, there might be a few things that I've forgotten about the game, well, it's probably in this book, but I might have forgotten a few names. This is, uh, the Shinra... Headquarter, yeah, that was, that, that's what it was, the Shinra Headquarters, and Cloud was looking at it. Um, although this game is just more than just, you know, this, this game is just more than just the Shinra Headquarters. It's a whole world to explore. It, it is amazing. It is a huge game for its time. Of course, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about the game, I'm gonna talk about the book. And I uh, do think the cover is pretty neat, although maybe a bit simple. Um, I always thought the logo was awesome, even though it is only because of nostalgia's sake. It's a pretty good logo overall, and I think, uh, yeah, that this is um, this is a you know a pretty thin book compared to some other Final Fantasy book that I have. And what luck, they're right here, and as you can see, they're much thicker, especially uh, with the hard cover of Final Fantasy 13. I bought it from a friend of mine uh, for pretty cheap. Uh, this is of course not by Piggyback, no, this is, uh, this is, um, Distribute, or how do you say that? Developed? I don't know. By Brady Games, this book is by Brady Games. And at the back they say it's only on PlayStation, well that isn't true, it's also on PC if you know what I mean. I got this book when I was a kid, so I have this game for I think more than 10 years already. It's still uh, pretty good looking, I don't do anything stupid with my books, I just... Put them in the closet and never look at them again, except for now. <laughs> and of course, I moved to uh, this house, so I had to um, I had to hold it. But that's it. And it's a um, yeah, it's, it feels a little more like a magazine. Well, you know, let's go see what's inside, shall we? I'm just talking way too much again. First, we have of course the table of contents. Uh, here's Cloud, of course, facing the Shinra headquarters, obviously, and of course the table of contents. Uh, then, of course, there is the Legal stuff, you know, the for the people that were developing, uh, for the staff members that were working on this book. A special thanks. Uh, of course, on the next page, on page three, there are the game basics and general tips. 
items, weapons and armor. Well, these are just, of course, tips for use art in the game. If you follow these tips, you're gonna have a much easier game, obviously. Of course, you need uh, your basic tips. And if you continue, more basic tips are there. Materia and spells, battle tips. It's all just very basic tips. Just, um, I don't know, when I play the game, I just figured it out myself. I finished the game four times. I might have already said that, but, I, but as a kid, I was a huge fan of this game. Complex combinations. Quaid magic. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. But what the heck? It's a uh, you know. It's just a standard uh, tips. Uh, the combinations you can have with your materia, which is really nice. Now we come to the characters. So there is a little bit of a story behind the characters, and there are the limit breaks. And the limit breaks are those powers that you have when there is a bar that needs to be filled up, and uh, you can do a special attack. And those attacks are stronger, but those attacks have a different kind of. You know effects to the enemy uh, there's a story about it uh, check the game out if you're really interested but it's a nice overview of a character what's what's behind the story of this character and of course there are limit breaks of course there's Barrett Wallace who's also a very important character I almost thought Barrett was a pretty awesome character even Barrett has like a very negative um, a backstory of Shinra uh, Shinra of are of course one of the enemies it's not the enemy no the enemy is of course Sephiroth but uh, Shinra is the, are the other enemies and Sephiroth also has something against Shinra. And Barret and Cloud also have a negative history about uh, Shinra, who's the company that runs the planet, sort of. They drain the energy from the planet and the planet is uh, slowly dying. I, I will not try to make any spoilers, but there might be spoilers in this video, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's of course Tifa, who's another uh, leading character. Cloud and Sifa were friends back in the day. I think they will also have a relationship later. Although that's not very clear because when I saw the movie Advent Children, did it, I wasn't even sure that they had a relationship. It's never clear. It's like, well, they're all childhood friends. And um, here you see, of course, Tifa's limits break as well. And of course, there's Eris. The weird thing is, in Final Fantasy VII, I'm not so sure. Um, I'm not so sure if it's in different versions, but now this is actually a book for the American version of Final Fantasy VII. That's fine. Most of the things in this book counts also for the European and Japanese version, so that's okay. But while in Kingdom Hearts, you also stumble across Final Fantasy VII characters like Eris, and there she's called Aerith. I just really don't know why. I guess I'm a fan, but not big of a fan to know that. But that's okay. I mean, I enjoy the games, and that's the most important thing about fans. And Eris, um, like I'm saying, I don't want to spoil anything, but I never got to the level 4. The first time I actually finished it, a, a, a classmate of mine uh, gave me cheats for it. So I had the most strongest summon, the strongest magic, the biggest um, limit breaks. <laughs> So yeah, then I use that. Uh, so one of the, the level four limit break is great. Gospel, uh, she can heal every character of the party fully. So yeah, that's actually pretty great. Eris, I'm not gonna spoil anything. You have to play the game. You truly have to play the game. Uh, Red Thirteen, also a character that that you stumble across later in the Shinra headquarters. Uh, he's a pretty uh, awesome, tough character. I almost thought he was a bit mysterious, but. Like I'm saying, you have to play the game. He's a, um, yeah, what is he exactly? A lion? Tiger? Whatever? A, um, cheetah? Uh, all you can say, he's a pretty awesome character, but he's uh, good with uh, magic and good with attacking, as what they are saying here. Red 13 is strong at both physical and magical combat. Uh, then, as, of course, there's Sid Highwind. In, e in almost every Final Fantasy, I think in every Final Fantasy, there's a Sid. And even in Final Fantasy, there's a Sid. And he is a character who joins your party and he comes later a little bit a playable, later in the story. I almost thought he was awesome. Uh, I almost thought the voice acting for the uh, Kingdom Hearts games, and I think it's the same voice actor as the movie Advent Children. He has a uh, similar, you know, <laughs> you know, the American voice. He sounds very American-like, very tough. And uh, Sid Highwind is—I uh, consider Sid Highwind to be like that. I own, you know, back in the day when I was, I always, I always changed the games that I played to movies, you know, to movie actors. And I almost thought Sid Highwind was a. Harrison Ford kind of character. 
Of course, there's Yuffie, one of the secret characters. I found her the first time I actually played it. It's not very hard to find. Maybe I can uh, get, maybe I can make a secret tip kind of video. But of course, you can find all this information in the internet. It's just cool to have a book. Uh, of course, you see her limit breaks. Uh, she was a pretty tough character. She was good with magic. And she was the, uh, you know, the youngest. She's 60 years old in this game. Of course, there's Kate Sith. He is also a pretty... I think every character when it comes to battling is awesome. I really love Kate Sith's Lemons Break. I'm not so sure if I already told you guys this, but... Uh, I was at the last boss, literally at the last boss, I was fighting against Sephiroth. And... Kate Sith has this Limit Break where the slots, slots are coming down. But if you make Kate Sit's face, because there are three slots, and if you make Kate Sit's face with three slots, it's an instant victory. It doesn't matter who we play against. So I was battling with Kate Sit, and I was lucky to have uh, Kate Sit's face at the final boss. I was fighting the final boss, and I had Kate Sit's uh, limit break. The face comes up. I never had that, I never knew what would happen, I, I just didn't know what would happen if Kate Sid's face would be made. Uh, the Grim Reaper comes and he slashes the enemy and I won. I've beaten the boss thanks to Kate Sid's limit break. I wish I could record it, you might not believe me, I totally understand if you don't believe me, but that truly happened. I don't have any proof of it, but that truly happened, trust me. It's one of my most favorite gaming moments in history. Maybe it has to do because it's Final Fantasy VII, but that's okay. But having a victory with the last boss like that, it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Okay, the last character that you will stumble across is also a secret character. It's Vincent Valentine. If you've played Final Fantasy Dirge of Cerberus, you're playing at this character. Um, he's also a secret character. I had to look up a guide, uh, not this book, but somewhere on the internet, how to get Vincent. And uh, he has awesome limit breaks, he can transform into monsters, and those monsters are pretty strong. It's uh, every character has like uh, four levels of uh, limit breaks. Of course, level four is, of course, the toughest, and those are the limit breaks you need to find because so, most of the time you would learn uh, the limit breaks yourself, the, the levels, but level four you need to find as an item. And you can then give it to the character that needs the limit break. And and there are secret ways to find them. But the next time I'm going to play this is with this book. So, yeah. Uh, of course, then the, then the walkthrough. I won't spoil too much. Maybe just a little bit. Of course, I'm going to show you images of the book. I've recorded the whole book. So, yeah. But it is Final Fantasy. What can I say? <laughs> On every uh, page you have some sort of an information on what you need to do. There are battle tips, there are notes, there are... Um, uh, this walkthrough will say, well, there are items here, you can... And of course, you see different kind of uh, pictures of monsters, uh, of the monsters you stumble across in that area, and um, on what level these monsters are, where are they weak against, uh, what do they have, a picture of the, that monster, and on every page you have a picture like that. Of course, if you stumble across more of these monsters in that area, you know, new ones, you see also a uh, picture uh, and the information of that enemy monster, whatever. And of course, you see pictures of different kind of of the graphics that this game has to offer. Of course, it sort of works like a map, a picture, but mostly it's the graphics itself. Like if you walk into the room, it's the same kind of graphics. But it also works as a map. Uh, of course, more. Of course, you see information about boss fights you stumble across. A guard scorpion. I still remember the beginning. I was amazed by the beginning. You had this nice cutscene, which, oh, I mean, back in the day when I played this game for the first, it overthrew me. Like, wow, this is amazing. The graphics, the area, the whole atmosphere you felt like emerged. I really love the first city. I mean, Midgar is the name of the first city you you start in. It's like this big steampunky kind of city. It's 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 slums. There are a lot of alleyways. There's there's a lot of you know um, houses that are made from you know trash and stuff like that. So it's actually it's actually quite nice. It it feels so it feels so post-apocalyptic and. You know, sure, in real life it's a different kind of story, but in video games it's so awesome to be in that, in that you know, world. And uh, the factory you start in is truly steampunky. So that's actually pretty awesome. Uh, 
And when I fought the first uh, boss, he was pretty easy. You know, of course, all first bosses are always pretty easy. Just like you've seen with my Final Fantasy 3 video. Uh, it's, 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 of course, you still have to use challenge because this boss is weak against lightning. So you use lightning. It's a typical, you know, it's a good, well-made RPG, especially for its time. Uh, of course, you get battle tips. One of the battle tip in one of the first pages is keep your eye on Cloud and Barrett's hit points. If either falls below 100, use potions to heal them. One of the most basic tips you can give to people that like to play RPGs. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. You see an explosion. Awesome. Of course, there is more. Of course, uh, different chapters or episodes, whatever. Uh, got names. Uh, there's also a list of items you find in that area. Of course, uh, these pictures... There are number there are numbers on those pictures, and there is where you can find items or paths or whatever. And uh, you see what you need to do. You see where you need to go. Uh, you talk with characters, of course. Yeah, this is a pretty easy to understand way of making a book. I'm going to skip a little bit forward because I definitely don't want to spoil everything. Of course, now you stumble across. Uh, of course, there are more parts of the story that you as I can show you right now. Uh, there is, of course, a picture of the first town. You come into a, you know, shop. Uh, there are different characters. There is, there are even a lot of side characters that has nothing to do with the main story. Uh, that talks to themselves that you can talk to. There are, there are some side quests to be done. You know, like finding an item, stuff like that. Uh, later, when you travel the world map, you can you know visit visit some places that has nothing to do with the story you can breed chocobo which we will come later in the book but you can breed a golden chocobo which can travel everywhere over mountains over water because in the beginning of the game of course for the most of the game you need a submarine you need um, you need a, a boat you need a airship which comes later the airship is pretty handy but it cannot land on most land it can land on the most standard kind of land uh, in the beginning, pretty early in the game, you stumble across a chocobo, but you can breed chocobo to do those kind of weird things, which is very awesome. Of course, it's just standard uh, page, raid on sector 5 reactor. There's, of course, pictures with enemies, you know, pictures with numbers on it. There are tips, and there are also warnings to be given. Uh, this warning on page 37. Uh, warning, watch out for air busters, big bomber and counter attack. Rear gun attacks. Both are surprisingly powerful. That's also a boss. I didn't have any trouble with the air buster. In the beginning, the game is pretty easy. It lets you start pretty easily, but it will get harder after some time. Of course, uh, one of the key uh, tips that I can give you is train. Don't train too much, so it will get boring, because back in the day, I wanted to be super powerful, but that's... Don't do that, just train as much as you want, but train enough so that you will be stronger for the next boss. Of course, yeah, there's really not much I can say. I've already said the most thing. I'm afraid that I will say too much again. Now we are at the sewers in the train graveyard. Yep, you go there as well. Play the game if you want to know how you will get there. Uh, well, there is a downside about these graphics because basically sometimes it's very unclear on where you need to go because there are, and not everywhere, I mean, there was one place where I actually got stuck for a little while because the graphics are so weird. There was this plank where you could walk on, but the plank looked like it that you could walk under it, if you know what I mean. You can't, but you needed you needed to walk on the plank on a specific spot. So it was more like that the plank that the plank was some bridge you walked over, and there was no way to get there. So uh, most people, a lot of people, had that problem with that specific spot. I'm not so sure if I've already stumbled across it, but that's something I remember, and it was really annoying, and I was stuck. But later in the book, we'll come to a part where I got also stuck, but I will talk about it once we get there, or else I've got nothing else more to say. Yeah, but these, 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 these places are just big, and sometimes you need to find a way to get to the next part, like... Right now you are at a train station, you need to move a train so that you can walk further. I mean, there aren't really tough puzzles in here. Sometimes you need to think like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? And then you do what you need to do. Of course, you stumble across the Turks. And the Turks is like a group that Shinra hires. 
um, to do their dirty work. I've always thought that the leader, uh, Reno, was his name. I always thought that he looked a little, little bit like uh, El Pacino. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but uh, I mean, back in the day, I always felt he looked a lot like El Pacino. And in Advent Children, he was anything but El Pacino. So, I don't know. It's um, sometimes hard to know what kind of personality somebody has is he ha if, if he has no voice acting. And Final Fantasy VII does not have any voice acting, so I almost felt like, uh, okay. Uh, we'll continue. Yes, uh, there are parts where you need to figure out how to get into the Shinra headquarters. Well, you will find a way and uh, you will get into the Shinra headquarters for whatever reason. I don't want to spoil too many things, but now we'll stumble. Now we are at the next part. That I got stuck with. Uh, there is this uh, place in the Shinra headquarters you need to find. Uh, you need to find items. The problem is there was this one treasure chest that I couldn't open back when I was a teenager about 14 years old. I couldn't open the treasure chest. I really couldn't open it and all of a sudden you were stuck. I was I technically wasn't stuck because I just had to go to other treasure chests but I thought no the game is over I'm stuck. I just couldn't open one treasure chest and all I needed to do was go to another room, open that treasure chest that was in the same floor because of course the Shinra headquarters had floors so if you go there, if you went there, um, you stumble across and you need these items to open a certain door or to work on a certain um, com computer or whatever um, or to find an item for somebody you go into... and I couldn't open the treasure chest like I already said and. I quit playing. Instead of locking into the other rooms on the same floor, which which I did the next time I played because I, I was kind of sad because I couldn't finish the game because I was stuck, but I technically wasn't stuck, I was just impatient. And I was like, this, this chest couldn't open, I'm stuck, you know? And then I figured it out that you just had to go to the... I felt pretty stupid. I felt really stupid. But whatever, that's, um, that's just stupidity on my side uh, well so that was one of the parts where I really got stuck and that was one of the parts where I really got um, where I got a little, a little bit sad but now it's just one of my favorite games I just I finished the game like four times as I already said so obviously I finished the game you will uh, continue um, you will continue uh, with the game you will stumble you will stumble across red 13 that are now part of the group of course, uh, in the beginning of the game, uh, you play as Cloud, obviously, but you stumble across Tifa, Barrett, and Eris. You stumble across Eris later. Of course, then you need to fight the son of the president. I'm not gonna tell you anything further before I uh, before I spoil anything. Of course, there's also a certain mini game called the Chase. It says the Chase here. It's when you sit on the motorcycle. This game knows. This game has a couple of uh, mini games. This game has a couple of. Uh, mini games where you drive a motorcycle in the chase you uh, you are being chased by Shinra henchmen and you just need to attack them with your sword and they get destroyed and yeah that's also a mini game which you can score it's actually quite fun I mean these mini games aren't the best but they work I guess that's not the reason why I like Final Fantasy 7 like I'm saying the chase mm, it's an okay mini game and it worked I guess it was playable of course you stumble across a boss and then the game just starts because I thought that at the end of the whole Midgar city I thought that the game was over but no the game just started uh, there's of course the chocobo ranch that's the that's also a part where I got a little bit stuck in the game what you needed to do you needed to cross a field and on the world map because the world map is differently when you go into a town it's differently than the world map itself because the world map is like big you hear this beautiful music and it's not like uh, normal towns and stuff like that but um, there's this field on the world map where a big cobra attacks you and I have to be honest I never I never tried to defeat him while my level was high enough but uh, what you need to do is cross that field. But what do you what do you need to do is get a chocobo to cross to be faster than that snake, so the snake can get to you. So I did not know that because I was a very impatient kid, as you might have already heard. 
And uh, what you need to do is just uh, capture a chocobo because there is the place where you capture all the chocobo. And so you uh, and so you uh, capture one, and so you can finally cross that field. But I did not know that because I felt like, oh, I can't cross it. How am I supposed to do this? I didn't have the patience for it, and my English wasn't as good. So yeah, this is um, and here is where you stumble across the first summer materia, the choco mark materia, and I don't really remember what that. Uh, what the summon does but that's fine check out the game if you're really interested and once you finally have your chocobo you can so you can cross the field away from the big mean anaconda type of creature of course you will continue further there's the mithril mine that's the place you will go to uh, once you cross the field there's a big cave you go there and that's the mithril mine where you stumble across the Turks, uh, you will find treasure chests there, which is really awesome. And then you will go to Fort Condor, which is not important for the story. But for later, it will be important for the story. Uh, you continue, you go to Junon Harbor, which is of course a harbor city. Uh, it has, every town has like this big little thing, this big secret, which really makes this game awesome. I mean, every town has something that is just interesting. Like Midgar is my favorite city in the game in history but there's also a little town on the bottom there where people live you need to save a girl there's of course a boss and uh, the girl will fall in love with cloud obviously but the girl is just a girl it's crazy uh but that's the harbor town and now there's of course Junon, who's like this big rich city uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can do there which is really awesome you can get items you can do side quests i think it's been quite some time since i last played this uh, game those of course uh, notes and tips. You continue and you can. Uh, you need to find a way to get on the Shinra boat. You have to find a way to... Um, of course you need to disguise yourself to go on the Shinra boat. And with that boat you will go to a different city, which I don't know yet. But uh, on that boat uh, people are attacked and you will stumble across Sephiroth, who is um, who's alive. Obviously, but uh, that's all I can say. Uh, there's of course a boss fight uh, that you have inside the ship because the ship is being overrun by Sephiroth. There's of course Casta del Sol, that's the next city you will go to. Uh, that's like a warm vacation town because it's always sunny, it's at the beach and it's extremely... That's why it's called Costa del Sol. It's, um, it's a nice vacation town. If you would look at it, you would definitely want to go on vacation yourself. It's really nice. Um, later in the game, you will go, you will stumble across Mount Coral. And at Mount Coral, you can uh, walk on rails for minecarts. You also stumble across items and stuff like that. Um, that's, yeah. Awesome. It really looks great. How you, I mean, it looked like a roller coaster, but actually, there are mine tracks which can go with the mine. And you can also find items there, you know, new weapon for Barrett, as I remember. There's North Coral, there's a little town where people live, and there is a uh, there is a train, whatever, which also takes you to the Gold Saucer. And the Gold Saucer is a theme park, and at that theme park, you can do mini games. You can Go on a roller coaster. You can do different kind of, you know, arcade mini games. You can go to a theater. Now you can also go to the battle um, battle arena, which you can fight enemies, which you can also have items with. Oh, what is there? Uh, there are some. There's chocobo races. You can breed chocobo, and you can go on chocobo races, which is really awesome. There is a haunted house. Yeah, that's this. That's the thing that I like. But you're getting caught because you need to go to Coral Prison. And the only way to escape from Coral Prison is to participate in Chocobo races, but that's later. Of course, you explore the, the, the of course you of course you explore the town first. Uh, you will stumble across a person from Barrett's past. Uh, of course, you need to you need to participate in the Chocobo race, which is uh, awesome. And that is the way to escape that prison. You will get a buggy and with the buggy you can go over certain terrain which cannot be done by foot and you go a lot faster as well um, then you go to Kongaga village it's not related to the story at all so yeah you can then like get extra items get also but there's also in that town there's also a 
uh, there's also a scene what has to do with the past of Eris and with Tifa. So that's actually pretty cool. Go check that out because it's close to uh, it's close to uh, you know it's close to that uh, prison, and it's not related to the story. You don't have to go there, but you can get extra XP items, which is also very important. And uh, you can also talk to people and have some little bit of backstory with some of the characters. Uh, then you go to Cosmo Canyon. Cosmo Canyon is the um, is the town where Red Thirteen grew up. Uh, you also see a part of his story about of hi about his past. You will learn about his grandpa, who's this floating old man with a big beard, and he's almost saying ho ho ho. Uh, don't know why uh, he said that. His name is Buggenhagen. Yeah, his name is Bugen. I don't know how you say that. Buggenhagen, Buggenhagen. I don't know. It's uh, it's a grandpa of Red Thirteen. Of course, there's a GI cave. Not to be confused with GI Joe. Get it? No, me neither. But that's okay. You fight, of course, a boss, um, and then you will learn about Red Thirteen past a little bit more, which is also very awesome because every character has a deep story behind them. It's uh, really awesome. Then you stumble across Nibelheim, which is really necessary to. Uh, you need to go to the Shinra Mansion, which is a very spooky place. You stumble across weird enemies there. But in Nibelheim, you can also get items and stuff like that. Because it's the Shinra Mansion, that has also something to do with the past. So check it out if you really want to know what that is. Of course, there is a boss you need to fight. Yeah, and of course, at the Shinra Mansion, you will also stumble across the secret character, Vincent. And you need to do some things to get Vincent, but it's... It's all in this book, or it's on the internet, so go check it out. Uh, there's Mount Nibel. Mount Nibel is, I don't even know what you do there. There's some, there's some uh, generators there, uh, the generators that suck the life force out of the planet. So it can, you know, it can work as power for people. Um, yeah, it's uh, Mount Nibel, it's just to get to the next uh, city. Yeah, because the next city is where you somewhere across sit. Uh, the old Harrison Ford man. Uh, it's Rocket Town, and there's a big rocket, which was funded by uh, Shinra, but Shinra um, pulled the plug. Play the game if you really want to know. Uh, you will, of course, you will get items. You will get Sid as a playable character. He has a spear as an item. Uh, you can also fly his ship for a little bit, but not too long because it will work as a boat. Yep. Uh, because something will happen, it gets shut down and it falls into the ocean. And Sid will join your party, obviously. And you will stumble across the next city, you will stumble across, is a city you don't need to go there. It's the city of Wutai and Yuffy, who is stealing all of your um, materia. Because she was after your materia all along, <laughs> what a surprise. And this is her hometown and uh, she is stealing all your materia, you need to do the quest there to get your materia back and she gives you materia back and it's all shuffled and you need to redo the whole thing which is a minor thing there's also some side quests to be done here in this game but you have some you know story behind it which is really awesome there's some weird mountains there uh, which goes really high there's some caves where you can also find items but there's also a part of the story which you don't need to do you need to find a couple of bosses that's Completely optional. There are five bosses in total, so we will get that. There's of course the cat and the keystone. Because you need to go to the temple of the agents. And you need a keystone, which is at Gold Sorcerer. You go there and you have a date with Eris, which you promised to her. Uh, then uh, you will go to the temple of the agents, which is somewhere in the middle of nowhere I personally had to use a walkthrough to get there. You are finally at the temple of the agents There's also items to be get obviously enemies to be fighting. There's a boss fight. That's the demon gate Oh my goodness and then Finally if you take something inside the temple the temple will shrink so Kate Sid will sacrifice himself but Kate Sid is actually a robot if you know what I mean. Kate Sid is actually a robot because a second version of Kate Sid comes right after he's taken the key because if you take the key inside this uh, temple, inside this um, ancient temple was it? Temple of the Agent, if you take the key inside the Temple of the Agent it will shrunk to its size and that temple is like the key to a certain place you need to go which I'm not going to uh, spoil just yet and uh, once you have that, uh, Kate Sid will sacrifice himself because he um, 
he kind of betrays the people because he's technically somebody inside Shinra who's controlling Kate Sid, but then he sacrifices himself and he's buddy again. Of course, there's Bone Village. That's a village you go later, because at Bone Village you need to go to the Sleeping Forest to go to the City of the Agents. But that's for later, because that will be one of the most iconic scenes in history. To me, it wasn't really that iconic, but I guess I'm one of the fewer ones. Of course, you need to go to the Sleeping Forest. You need to do, you need to have an item uh, with you. And um, if you have that item, you can go to the uh, Sleeping Forest to the City of the Agents, which is a very important place in this game. The thing that will happen, uh, Eris dies. Even though you have been using, if one of your party members die, you can use Phoenix Downs to, to make them go alive again, because that's how video games work. I mean, RPGs at least. Not here! Eris uh, gets killed by Sephiroth and she dies. It's a beautiful part of the story, it didn't really touch me was like it kind of surprised me though it really surprised me like oh i didn't saw that one coming it really came out of nowhere and uh because she, she has been she has been trying to stop separate she's been trying to save the planet i'm not gonna tell you a lot people but i can tell you this yes she gets killed then of course there's a, a boss fight and uh, eris um eris's body gets sunk to the bottom of the uh water and uh, there she is there's of course the Coral Valley Cave, uh, you will go there as well to go to the Icicle Inn, that's a town on top of the mountain where it's snowing and it looks like a, a winter vacation place, something, really looks cool. There is where another pretty awesome mini game, it's the snowboarding and the snowboarding doesn't really work all that well, but there's a big place you need to go which is called Great Glacier. First you go with the snowboard there and then you have a big place to explore with lots of items but it's uh, pretty hard to navigate in this place. I you do get a map but I was pretty lost pretty quickly. Uh, you need to stay warm or else you will collapse and if you collapse a man will save you but there are still so many places to go to to get items from. So yeah, I mean this book absolutely explains where you need to go, uh, obviously, which is pretty handy. But I was mostly um, I was mostly uh, lost in this uh, game. But yeah, I guess with this book I can actually go there. You need to, of course, so you need to go, of course, further into the Great Place here. Uh, this man that saved you lives on top of that whole cold place, and you continue. And there's less coldness in this place. You go to next. Which of course you need to fight a boss, which will get you to the crater. And the crater is a very interesting place. Every place is pretty interesting. At the crater, uh, you will find something about Cloud's Pass, something about Sephiroth's Pass. You, you will see more. You will have to fight a boss again, obviously. And uh, something bad will happen, which I'm not going to tell you. And Cloud is uh, lost. Cloud is lost in his mind. He's still there, but he's lost in the mind because about the thing what happened at the crater. And uh, you are now at Junon. That's right, you are at Junon. What you're, what you're going to do is, what Shinra is going to do is attack uh, the Great Crater with Sephiroth in it because all kinds of monsters are coming out now and that's really scary. I'm so sorry, that's really scary. Uh, there are monsters that are attacking uh, the Junon. Uh, everybody's in panic, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Tifa, who's also being attacked by uh, the enemy, I've kind of, um, kind of reading right through this. You might be lost by what am I, am I saying? Play the game yourself. And then uh, the next place, there's also a place where you need to go. The search for Cloud is what they like to call it. Of course, Clouds get lost. I'm not gonna tell you guys how he got lost, but he uh, gets lost and you, and you really need to search for him at a certain place where, uh, because uh, there has been a disaster and there's a certain town who got flooded by uh, something and uh, yeah, one of those um, towns is where Cloud is. I personally had to search for it, I think I uh, went to the internet uh, to go look for where Cloud is and what the heck, Cloud is at Medeal. Uh, you will get on the train, runaway train, I don't know how you get there. Of course you need to, oh yeah, you will stumble across in North Coral, I'm kind of cheated, I kind of uh, look. And you will get on a train and uh, with that train it might 
The first time I actually played this, the train crashed onto the North Coral, but uh, you can you can stop the train by crashing into the North Coral. You have 10 minutes exactly to help to stop the train. Or you either you crash or you don't crash. I mean, the first time I actually played this, I crashed into North Coral, but uh, the few next times that I've played this, I didn't crash into the North Coral. I mean, there is a possibility. You actually see an FMV clip where you either crash into North Coral or you don't crash into North Coral. You get a nice uh, item if you help, if you stop the train. I'm not gonna tell you what, and it's right here, but I'm not gonna tell you where to play the game. Uh, you need to return to Fort Condor. Uh, you also get a new summon there, which is also very awesome. And then North Coral, you will get also a, you will also get a very important item for the quest and for yourself, which is awesome. Of course, uh, you will uh, you will return to reveal to check on Cloud. Cloud has been in a coma ever since. And um, what Tefa wants to do now is take care of Cloud. Uh, you will fall into the water, and um, Cloud is there. And then you will restore Cloud's memory because Cloud has, of course, been in a coma and he needs to remember what is going on. You will learn about his past, which is really awesome. And Cloud gets uh, Cloud. Is getting restored from his coma. Tiff helped him, as you can see. Tiff and Cloud are going to have a relationship, but it's not very clear if they actually do have a relationship. But <laughs> uh, here is where they, um, you know, meet each other. And Cloud gets restored, obviously. Okay, we are almost at uh, the end. Uh, Medial is destroyed because of the disaster that happened because of the monsters in Sephiroth. Um, there's of course a underwater reactor where you can have a submarine. I guess that's for later. Of course you need to fight monsters, you will get items there, blah blah blah, you know how it goes. Of course you have to fight a uh, boss and then you will get the submarine battle so you can you can now you can now fly with a submarine um, Of course, I haven't talked about it uh, while reading this book uh, You can also you also get a your own airship and with that airship you can fly all over the world and get most places Of course like I'm saying you can't land on most ground, but yeah, I missed that part obviously i've been reading pretty quickly through this book but you do get a submarine it's not my favorite kind of way of traveling you can get uh, you can get to certain places with the submarine then uh for some ever reason you're going back to rocket town with the rocket ship and you will go to space um uh, with that rocket ship you are going to fight Sephiroth. Then you go to the ancient mine. I don't know exactly where it is, but I guess you need to find it. <laughs> Sorry, I really, really, really don't want to spoil too much. I'm not very good at it. Yeah, you will fight against uh, the monsters. You will fight against the diamond weapon. That's how they are called. Because the weapons attack and you will fight against him. Uh, obviously, and then uh, diamond attacks the Shinra building. And then the Shinra headquarters is being destroyed. Uh, then you are returning to Midgar after so long you are finally returning to Midgar one of my favorite cities And uh, you can also find items there blah blah you know how it goes you fight enemies uh, Boss the proud claw that is what you need to fight and uh, because of the proud claw there is there are also some enemies in there That is quite known you have Heidegger and you have Scarlet the Shinra crew that is against you I almost thought that uh, Heidegger was lo Was looking like but Spencer you could say uh, because what you need to do is you need to stop Hojo and Hojo is also a enemy of which is part of the Shinra crew and Hojo is the scientist uh, that is doing this for his own uh, benefits uh, check out the game be really interesting and then there is disc 3 and on disc 3 you have the final confrontation and the final confrontation is the last place you go to before fighting the last bosses um, you have your caves, there are places that you can go to, you can find a lot of great treasure, you can find a lot of, uh, you can fight a lot of enemies, uh, there are paths you can take, yeah, you come across enemies, obviously, and then there is a boss fight, which is the Genova Synthesis, and, uh, you fight the dead creature, and then you will fight against two, uh, Sephiroths, which is the Bizarro Sephiroth, and then you fight against Saver Sephiroth, which is the ultimate last boss. I used my uh, Kate Sid uh, slot machine attack on him and I beat him. I was pretty lucky. And then when you finally defeat the last boss, you will 
Cloud will fight against Sephiroth because Sephiroth is defeated. He is wearing only his pants and he's gonna fight uh, Cloud and Cloud is doing the ultimate um, which you need to find, uh, the ultimate uh, limit break. Uh, level four because you of course you will need to find that limit break but um he, you can use it now against Sephiroth and you beat him it's absolutely uh it was actually pretty scary when you finally beat the last boss you will still need to fight against Sephiroth but you use the limit break and the game is over and um i'm not gonna spoil the last video for you guys you really have to check the game out of course the rest of the book the book is almost over do you have side areas you have side quests and stuff like that you know this is the segment of this book where they actually where they actually explain where you can find side areas where you can find uh, items very important items like uh, nice materia elixir which is a very strong healing potion magic source whatever uh, yeah you can um, yeah you can then find awesome awesome things you can find like uh, the ultimate weapon for that character or the ultimate limit break for that one uh, for this character it's awesome um yeah just uh, the things you can find some of the things i figured it out on my own but but sometimes you read things and you think like wow you have like turtle paradise flyers i never knew i never knew this was there but these are flyers that you can find and it wasn't very clear to me what those flyers did because I yes I did stumble across those flyers you find flyers on the wall and you read them but I did not know uh, they were actually used for something so yeah and of course there are houses you can buy but you don't need to you can find yeah items you can do whatever you want there's special cinema which I have already discovered with, the, my, with my fourth playthrough you can actually chocobo or you can actually breed chocobo and you can race them so it can turn into a golden chocobo yeah that will be a later section D this part of this section of the book they actually explain to you how that uh, chocobo races go how uh, you can breed them and stuff like that um, there are special chocobos which i already talked about you have the blue you have the black you have the gray whatever you have all kinds of colored chocobo uh, which does other things than other chocobo blah 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 uh, there's of course the materia caves there has to be a special way to get through those special caves and those special caves are only accessed by chocobo by certain chocobo so you can find the best summon the best kind of magic whatever uh, the first material cave have the knight of round of the round and that is the strongest summon uh, the knights of the rounds attack like dozens of uh, uh, dozens of times which will give you like four thousand uh, hit per, per attack and it's really handy uh, there are ultimate weapons this is a segment where you can find the ultimate weapons you can f this is also a segment where you can find the ultimate limit breaks the level four limit breaks uh, this is where you find certain monsters and there are the American creatures which are only available on the American version of Final Fantasy VII. I don't know for sure if these monsters are available for the European version. No, you just stumble across certain uh, enemies. You have the Battle Arena and the Gold Sorcerer, which you can get uh, a lot of handy great items. A Chocobo Racing Speed Arena, I don't know what that is, I should check it out. Of course, the certain mini games that you can do inside the Gold Sorcerer. Uh, yes, a lot of that. And of course, there is the Beast Harry. You can actually uh, see uh, the many creatures you stumble across in the game on Alphabet. Of course, the bosses you stumble across, the normal enemies. Of course, the different characters you need to fight against. Um, of course, you uh, Dine, Dine, Elena is also part of the Turks, which you will stumble across, which you need to fight against. If you see on this, you know, Beast Terry, you will um, see their statuses, what they're weak against, what they're strong against, what their morphs are, whatever. Of course, there are the weapons for each character, which is um, nicely put together. Um, Vincent, Kate, Sid, Sid himself. There's of course the armor for each character, the accessories which can every character you know equip with themselves. There are the items, uh, the materia, and last but certainly not least, there is the Final Fantasy VII world map. No, it's a world map. It's a nice drawn world map, which is completely, which is really awesome. This is the legends. How do you say that in English? I don't know. Uh, the information where everything is and there is a picture of the shinra headquarters right on the next page and then there is absolutely nothing but white and of course there's the bag of the book 
This was Final Fantasy 7, the strategy guide. Thank you so much for watching. This was the Game and Christian 1, the official Final Fantasy 7 strategy book. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I will see you the next time with some more Game and Christian. And um, I will keep on uploading these videos. And um, maybe I really need to play this one time. But for now, the book. And I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I talk way too much like right now. I really need to finish this video. Goodbye, everybody. See you guys next time with some more videos. And of course, you are welcome to subscribe. Bye-bye.